Uh, what I think about the music of Vi yeah! <laughs> What I think about I have to look there, right? The history of me and Alejandro is mad as well. Uh, me and Alejandro met each other 13 years ago. I remember Alejandro didn't have a single idea about hard music in general. He didn't know what it was. We were going in school together and I show him this music and he get, uh, he get uh, passionate about it. And uh, I remember when we were 16, he decided to never have a job to focus completely on music. Me, I always had a job. I mean, I always had to work because my father, if I go to my father and I say, oh, listen, dad, uh, if I, I want to do music and I don't want to work, my father kick my ass. <laughs> Basically, I mean, what the fuck, man? Go work, <laughs> you know? Tu sei un pazzo, va bene da qui! Papi, papi, papi! Sono stanco di te, ti do un pugno nella testa! Ti uccido con questa carne! And I remember in the beginning I was like, nah, man, it's not my thing. Uh, but every time I go in the studio and he's doing music, every time I give him my ideas, you know? We got along really well. So at some point I remember I just said, okay, man, okay, man, let's do it. <laughs> Alejandro did send me a message like, uh, oh man, really, I am really fucking happy. I am really happy that uh, we are gonna do this together. It was uh, really good times. We started to work on music together. In the beginning, Alejandro was like the arm and me the mind and we worked together on tracks. I think you guys doesn't even know about these songs. <laughs> I remember we were asking feedbacks. The first guy we did ask feedback to was Kronos. Uh, I remember I sent uh, Kronos a personal message and I asked him, man, what do you think about this track? And he said, oh yeah, the ideas are cool. The track is really dark, but uh, there is a lot of stuff to... He was not honest, the track was shit. <laughs> the track was fucking shit. When you start with uh, doing DJ, doing music, you start with the passion. Yeah. You, you, you can't expect any money from that. We start like... <laughs> you know, like In the beginning we told... We told... Oh man, this, look, this lead is amazing one day. You're like... <laughs> man, it's supposed to sound like shit. No, man, of course not. <laughs> The first time I heard about Gearbox was when um, me and Alejandro uh, listened to the track of Adventum over 9000. We were a fan. Uh, we were a fan of Adventum and stuff. Uh, together with other artists that released with, on Gearbox in the past, like uh, Recoil, the first tracks of Regain uh, released in Gearbox. So we found out about the label because those artists that we were listening to uh, were releasing in that label. Me and Alejandro were producing tracks uh, like uh, in the studio, like with two little speakers and stuff like this, and uh, we tried to send demos to Gearbox. The quality really wasn't there at the start, but you could tell instantly that the uh, the ideas and the potential was there because the, the stuff they were doing is very intricate, very clever, um, and quite unique in the way they were doing it. The film helped us in building uh, what is our style today a bit like uh, more energetic uh, compared to the really first tracks we did like i'm talking about five years ago you know and i remember phil like the first five or six tracks he did uh, reject them but when they send me stand back and respect me the drive the energy the ideas the the, the feeling and the atmosphere of the track was just so cool it was just a sign of things to come you can't teach musical genius and for me, that first two tracks were musical genius. I could, I could tell they were going to be incredible producers in the future. So that he could accept our tracks. The first tracks we released in Gearbox were Respect Me and Step Back, the first EP. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I remember like uh, I was um, I was at the birthday of my ex-girlfriend in Italy. I remember Alejandro calling me excited as fuck because oh man uh, we are gonna release in Gearbox because Phil finally did uh, accept our tracks. He said respect me is a masterpiece and uh, I remember I was fucking excited in this birthday and uh, the kind of smaller things back in the day they, they got a lot more kind of emotionally uh, charged by them I mean than, than the kind of stuff that we're doing nowadays for example when they found out that they were releasing on Gearbox their reaction was way way bigger than when they found out they were playing at Defcon Blue so Gearbox is bigger than Defcon uh, really, we were both happy, happy as fuck to have the chance to release on Gearbox. When we saw the first big salary of October, October 2016, me and Ale took like almost 2,000 each. And for us was like being fucking rich, you know, because in Italy, 2,000, you take it if you are like a director of a bank almost, you know. And we thought, okay, uh, if now things are going to be like this, uh, let's just fucking do it. I said to Alejandro, man, let's just do it. Let's move to Netherlands. Come on, three, four months, come on. And um, then we started to, to go in Netherlands just to check houses, you know. Marvin helped us a lot with this. He did let us stay in his house, me, Alejandro, Christopher, sleep in his house. I said, I believe so much in, in what, you, what you're trying to do and with the, with the music that I, I believe if you move, your career will be a success. Just, just have my word on that. They first lived a few weeks with, in my house. I was living in Harlem and uh, the, these guys cooked uh, for me so much and uh, I still thank them. Like, they make the, be the best pasta carbonara I've ever eaten in my life. Uh, yeah, also the, the environment we had uh, uh, when we moved, you know, because as you guys know, uh, we are not Dutch, <laughs> we are Italians and we moved uh, in Netherlands just uh, for this job, you know, so it's kind of... It's kind of stressful to leave all your life behind, like your family, your friends, um, going to live uh, uh, alone basically and we did live together yes for the first years but uh, we we had different uh, visions so um, uh, also when you live together sometimes it's hard to to get along we're living with uh, with the guy with the guys david and christopher uh, was impossible for me I'm, I'm completely honest I mean, I, I like the guys, but I was completely impossible for me because, also because I'm a dickhead, I know that. I'm a guy that I need uh, peace, you know? I need the quiet, I need to relax a lot. Yeah, and I remember that Christopher started to produce music during the night when I, when I want to go in the bed, you know what I mean? And this is really bad. I mean, fuck you, Christopher, seriously. You always did that because we had our studio in our rooms and there is the music of everybody going around the house uh, and sometimes it's, it's just a not, a not a good environment, you know? It was a lot of um, stress on everyone, I think, being together for that long and always seeing each other, then also doing the gigs together. I think that that period, in that period, a lot of things uh, changed because our relationship was completely different from the start, not because us, but because uh, the experience that we had in that house, and uh, you know everything was new because it was a new country, a new house. So from the start, when we moved in Netherlands, we had a lot, a lot, a lot of problems. When they moved to the Netherlands, that was really a recipe for disaster because the whole stress of the house, the bookings, the lack of money all the, the kind of difficulties in living in a different country, they all came together and made a really, really difficult situation for everyone, including myself and Marvin, because we kind of pushed them into to move into the Netherlands and there was this huge feeling of guilt on our shoulders. But we knew eventually it would turn out to be the right decision because the guys were way too talented. The last two years were not the most uh, happy period of my life, you know what I mean? Despite uh, what you guys can think about the, su the success, uh, the big parties and stuff, uh, sometimes uh, to feel good with yourself you need something else, you know? Because of the, the stress in that house, it kind of probably deteriorated the existing relationship and the existing friendship a bit as well. 
and I think everything changed a lot after that. It was a lot, a really difficult situation for everyone. Yeah, because of the war situation, I started to go to the psychologist and stuff for the first time in my life, and um, I'm working on it. I mean. Um, uh, with music and music helps and I try to surround myself with positive people and this is uh, to let you understand that um, yeah you see the life of a DJ you see the parties you see the flights uh, you see me in a country and you think I'm living the perfect life it's not always rose and flowers you know what I mean there is also sometimes bad stuff but in the end uh, you have to keep going and uh, find the force to gone you know when i go on the stage like of course it's amazing because i can i, I can jump i can play my music everyone enjoy the music and i enjoy it too but when i'm back at home it's it's different i have i have a lot of work to do like really really a lot for example talking more into the specific uh, like uh, sometimes the 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 life as a dj can be stressful you know i mean um, it's not like uh, all the fantasy and wonderful world that everybody think. Uh, you have a lot of uh, stress on your shoulders. For the Extreme album, I remember I did like uh, one track per day and this was a bad, bad idea because I was really, really sick. He spent a lot of time in the studio, like a lot more than normal. And he ended up getting one, one day I came home and he was like, completely I don't know like out of his body like it was really weird he was really really sick I remember uh, I was in the kitchen uh, I drink some water and they faint and my girlfriend was was really really scared about and I remember I opened my eyes at the hospital with 42 degrees fever like was was crazy oh yeah I have asthma really bad really <coughs> bad and uh, I have also a panic attack and uh, I have, what's, what's the name in English? A little cock. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's not true. But they're both super different characters. On the one hand you have like the super artistic, uh, he's I, almost like a rock star Alejandro. <laughs> Davide knows every single kick roll of their tracks. He's like always super spot on. You can see his complete body move to the tracks they make. <laughs> Together they have this chemistry. Like if, if, the, if you see these guys on stage, the fucking stage perfor performance is phenomenal. And they came with literally zero money in their pocket. They had nothing. And then I forced them to move to the Netherlands. Uh, they had zero money, they, had, they also had hard times where they almost had no money to, to come by. But I said, guys, if you need money or, or you need food or you need anything, I, I believe in these guys so much, I'll help you guys. And uh, yeah, look what it turn in, turned out into. We, we did, um, uh, together we did the uh, uh, Suppression and uh, Malice album party. Yeah, our first album yeah, was uh, a bit unexpected for, for us, for me. Because basically everything about that was not yeah, was not prepared. Yeah, was not prepared. I just uh, we had so many computer, tracks, so many tracks, and, <laughs> and, they, tracks. <laughs> and they say, yeah, I have so many tracks in my computer, and also so many tracks that people were asking for yes. a long, long time, long, long, long time. Because I had some problem with the mix down mastering. You heard it, my track or no? Yeah, you heard Which it. one? Every single track, man. Or the album. No. It sounds fucking cool. And the uh, old sweet computer, <laughs> you remember? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, think lo I lost the project like... Think of uh, the PC just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. The projects, guys, we told you, uh, before moving in, in Netherlands, our PC just got struck by the fucking light, lightning bolt. Two times, know? two times. So that's why we didn't... My PC really... exploded, this PC exploded. <laughs> yeah, so without no reason, boom! I don't know, just... Yeah. So we can't do a lot of tracks that you guys are asking for. Yeah. The Malice album had been in plan for two years. <laughs> I'd say two years. And I would say when we first had about, we had about 15 tracks ready for this album. And I would say 80% of those tracks which were ready for the album 
didn't make it into the album at all. <laughs> there was so many tracks got lost along the way. Yeah, it was, it was simple. I just watched my computer. I say, David, we have too many tracks. <laughs> That's it. Too many tracks. Too many tracks. We have to release an album because we can't do like thousands. Because if we do, <laughs> if we do singles, we are gonna finish in yeah. five years. <laughs> in five years. <laughs> yeah. So let's do an album. We can say it is quite different from the usual music yeah, of yeah, this yeah. scene. It's, it's a bit different. I mean, uh, we got a lot of critics, of course, because yeah, it's normal, you cannot please everybody. In my opinion, it was, was a good job. I'm really proud of that album. We had a lot of problems with uh, Gearbox. I think people need to know that we've gone through rough times, we still come through it. Yeah. I think yeah, it's right that, for example, you, you explain <clears throat> the situation. So the Malice album situation was a massively stressful situation. The company that I ordered the CDs from, they made a huge mess of the CDs. They didn't get stuff done on time and we had to order a smaller batch just to fulfill orders on the album party. If we'd we not had CDs for the album party, it would have been a travesty. But the way it turned out was actually way worse because the CDs that we sold at the album party had the same audio on CD1 as on CD2. They made a mess of 1,200 CDs. They printed the same audio on CD1 and CD2 and instead of taking the responsibility for this uh, complete and major cock-up, they've basically tried to blackmail us. And they, because we didn't sign up to this blackmail, we've, they've not helped us at all. And I've not had to take legal uh, action upon them. Probably one of the worst times of my life. I've never felt stress like it. And I think I went three or four days without any sleep, just spending every waking moment trying to answer back to every single person to let them know what the situation was. And the worst thing was I didn't know. I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know how we were going to fix the situation. But luckily, every single person who bought a CD was so understanding of the situation. They, they supported both myself and Malice through it. They were absolutely fantastic. And I think everyone that bought a CD at the album party, they were already completely and utterly happy with how good the album party was. The album party was absolutely phenomenal. That was pure magic. You can just, it all came together, like we worked together on the marketing, on the whole uh, strategy for the album. And then we had a 2500 sold out uh, album event, which till, they, till today, I think 10 years of Gearbox will blow it out of the water, but to me had the best atmosphere I ever experienced at any party ever. Extreme was, was amazing. The crowd, uh, also the location, I, every, I love everything from that. We didn't yeah. expect the people to, yeah, to sing on every single track. Yeah. We heard people sing on kicks for the first well, time. Yeah, for the first time people sing. <laughs> Or Melis jumping into the in the in the crowd and, and uh, hog horizontal uh, kick rolling and it was, uh, when, it was when he dived in and didn't make it clear that he, that was, he wanted to dive. He was trying to get people out of the way. He came right into some poor lassie's face. I think she like nearly knocked her out. <laughs> but but, the <laughs> but that's he, the stuff. That he, he obviously he, he fucked that up so bad that he knew that he had to do something to fix it afterwards. So then he started kick rolling. His back in the air. <laughs> That video was released on, on, on Grasta Arena and somebody filmed it and you can literally see somebody came by and people didn't know it was Melis, they just saw a person on, on his back <laughs> uh, stage, uh, stage uh, crowd surfing. Yeah, that's Malice. Where do you get your inspiration from? And you had yeah. the trash can and was like, oh, some inspiration here, dude. <laughs> Yo, Ale, all good, man? Uh, not so much, man. What do you mean, not so much, man? What's the problem? I don't know, I don't have inspiration anymore. This, the music is every time it's the same. And inspiration, man. Yeah. What, what the fuck is the problem with inspiration, man? Why? No, man. You you are taking too serious, man. Just think about, man. Think about the cowbells, man. Yes, we take our inspiration from yeah, no, the sky. It's, it's also necessary. When the, when the stars are aligned, uh, I get the the best inspiration. This bottle is almost empty. But man, I, you you gonna you gonna be like, uh, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, everything was a mess, but in the end. Uh, Nobody cares. Yeah, nobody did because care because everything was, the was fan base, fixes, of course. But. Yeah, because you guys are so loyal <laughs> and so nice that you didn't complain that much. I mean, you waited for Phil and us to fix the issue, and uh, you guys were happy still. You guys still come to our parties. 
we will still play in the biggest events. We didn't t- lose uh, reputation yeah, yeah, yeah. or fan base because of this. Because you guys are awesome. The fans were just... I, I can't thank them enough. They really helped me through that. Without their support, I was just ready for giving up on everything. On everything. Because the stress was just too much. Anzi, gang. Gang? Gang. Thank you very much for this. I want to see you all guys the 19th of October. It's gonna be amazing. The lineup is sick as fuck. Like, and I'm personally, I'm gonna smash everything because I think that that the Gearbox X will be the last malice performance like together, you know? The last party we will do, me and Alejandro as a duo, as Malice, so I want to see you guys to say your goodbyes to the, Sma- to the Malice project as it was. And I want to see you guys there to share the passion that you have for Gearbox, for Raw, for this music, uh, there, and to celebrate together the 10 years of Gearbox. See you guys there. <laughs>